Delegates to order at 10.16 a.m. Oh my god. Okay. I will now read the rules of the House. The membership of the House will consist of delegates at large. The delegates at large are the district board members. The order of elections will go as follows. Amendment of district bylaws, international endorsements, bulletin editor, treasurer, secretary, governor, and approval of resolutions. Because we have two candidates for bulletin editor, the second team to speak will be put into a separate room. Each candidate's campaign manager will present a speech no longer than one minute. Following their campaign manager, the candidate will present her speech and answer questions from the district board and an international representative which shall last no longer than 10 minutes. A representative will call time for the campaign manager's speech and at 10 minutes for each candidate. There will be no one minute or 30 second warnings. The knocking procedure will not be followed for this election. Instead, the presider will state that the speaker's time will begin when she says her first word. During voting sessions, each campaign manager and candidate will be put into a breakout room to await results. If a person in the breakout room is eligible to vote, they may do so from the room. Voting will be done by email. At the conclusion of voting, the candidates and campaign managers will be returned to the main room, and, the and then the candidate will be placed into another room so that the district administrator or assistant district administrator will present the results to the candidate. Candidates will be returned to the main room and the presider will announce the results of the election. In the event that there is only one candidate for an office, a motion can be made and seconded to elect by a show of hands. Prior to sh the showing of hands, the candidate and campaign manager will be placed in a breakout room until results can be announced. District Secretary Sandra Lee will now call roll. When I call your name, please say present. Governor Emma Chang. Present. Secretary Sandra Lee, present. Treasurer Ryan Sassauer. Present. Bolton Editor Angela Batune. Present. Crystal Lieutenant Governor Alexander Lodham. Present. Diamond Lieutenant Governor Wendy Galvan. Present. Emerald Lieutenant Governor Naomi Tanaka. Present. Goldstone Lieutenant Governor Angel Lee. Present. Jade Lieutenant Governor Leslie Kiros. Present. Jet Lieutenant Governor Katrina Huynh. Here. Ruby Lieutenant Governor Jeanette De La Cruz. Present. Sapphire Lieutenant Governor Annie Lee. Turquoise Lieutenant Governor Cecilia Wong. Here. Awards and Recognition Chair Colby Ohm. Convention Chair Nicoletta Bryan. Present. Kiwanis Family and Foundation Chair Natalie Liu. Present. Membership Development and Education Chair Dylan Karkanen. Present. And Technology Chair Elise Cotney. Here. We have 17 out of the 18 delegates present. We have reached a quorum. I will now introduce the special guests on this meeting. So please welcome Interna Key Club International Trustee, Hannah Paul Rosnick. Service Leaderships Program Director, Mr. Bruce Hennings. CNH Kiwanis Governor, Mr. Timothy Cunning. Thank you. CNH Kiwanis Governor-Elect, Mr. Gary Gray. Thank you for having me, everyone. CNH Kiwanis District Secretary, Mr. Mark McDonald. Hello, everyone. Incoming Crystal Assistant Regional Advisor, Ms. Joyce Chen. Incoming Turquoise Assistant Regional Advisor, Ms. Karen Kikuchi. And finally, uh, Key Club Advisor, Ms. Kwong. Hi, thank you. Okay, thank you. We will now move into the approval of the district bylaw amendments. Please welcome District Treasurer Ryan Sassauer to explain the amendments. 
Uh, the district bylaws are policies and rules that we as a district must follow. The district bylaws show transparency and ensures consistency in practices. Today, we will be approving an amendment to the bylaws regarding the fiscal year. At this time, I'd like to ask if all non-delegates could turn off their video cameras. Okay. I entertain a motion to approve the district bylaw amendments. Is there a motion? I, Naomi Tanaka, Emerald Division, Lieutenant Governor, approve uh, a move to approve the district bylaws. Is there a second? I, Colby Ohm, award the recognition chair, second that motion. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Okay, thank you. But all opposed, uh, please raise your hand now. <laughs> Are there, <coughs> are there any abstentions? Motion carries. For any non-delegates, you may now uh, turn on your cameras. So now we will be begin the process of elections. As I am seeking district endorsement, I will hand over the gavel and chair position to District Secretary Sandra Lee. We will now begin with the international trustee endorsements. We have one candidate. You will begin, you will be given a one minute to speak for your campaign manager and your time will begin when you start speaking. Would you announce the candidate and the campaign manager? The candidate for running for international trustee endorsement is Emma Chang and her campaign manager is Alexander Lagham. Alexander, you'll be given one minute to speak. Whenever you're ready, please begin in our timer will time. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Ladham, and I'm here today as Emma Chang's campaign manager for International Trustee. I first met Emma just under a year ago when she became our district governor. As a new district board officer myself, I was anxious to meet the girl that would lead our district for the next year. After meeting, I knew we'd be in great hands. Emma is one of the most dedicated and resilient people I've ever met. Her compassion for this district and Kiwans overall is amazing and unparalleled, and she takes every opportunity to serve our members. Given her experience on district board and her presence in Key Club International, I believe she'll make the perfect candidate for international trustee. Not only will she be serving Key Clubbers all over the world, but she'll also highlight the importance of Kiwans on an international level. Emma's passion for her job will continue to grow, and she will take every opportunity to serve all the members and officers that come after her. Therefore, I urge you all to vote yes on endorsing Emma Chang for international trustee. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now proceed with the candidate speech and questioning. Candidate Emma Chang, whenever you will be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the district board and international trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Chang and I'm running to be one of your next Key Club International Trustees. For the past year, I served as your district governor and gained the skills needed to take on this position. Not only have I served as a member of the International Council, but I've also worked closely with our trustee, participated in two international committees, and took the time to realize what our organization needs to grow. In spite of our membership decline, Key Club is on its way towards solving the challenges we currently face to improve membership experience, leadership, and service. However, the job is not yet done. The next board's responsibility is to turn these aspirations into reality and kickstart a trend of growth once again. It is our responsibility to bring back the focus on the core of our organization, our members. Thus, my platform core is focused on reinstating growth throughout Key Club International. First, create. In this next term, we should strive to create accessible resources for both officers and members to utilize throughout their time in Key Club. To begin, we can revamp our international Google Drive folder with category-specific tabs and revise the service directory. This will increase the representation of Key Club as well as promote service and leadership around the world. 
By creating more useful resources during crucial times of membership recruitment, we can better assist our clubs in growing our membership. This brings me to our next part, O for outreach. While the leaders before us have done much to expand our outreach through the truly international campaign and Key Club Week, we can do even more to network by first starting with our clubs. Over the summer, we should work with governors to analyze both traditional and non-traditional clubs to understand what individual districts need. To do this, we can create transition reports and reflectors to communicate with past and current officers and analyze challenges early on. We can also create professional mentorships and expand our relationship with Circle K to increase the opportunities available within the Kiwanis family. Ultimately, these measures can retain and grow our membership. Then R, represent. As leaders, we need to represent our values within Key Club. Leading by example, we can represent transparency from the international board by making meeting minutes, reports, and goals of easily available to all members through the Key Club website. Further, we can also use our vast networking platform to better represent smaller districts and diversity in Key Club. While this year has brought on many positive changes, including daily posts and inclusive stories, we should start the new term by recognizing new members and clubs, raising awareness for our charities, and continuing the truly international legacy. Finally, E, elevate. In summation of all these goals, it's most important for us to make Key Clubbers around the world feel welcomed and included. To elevate each and every member and leadership position, we should provide meaningful recognition across all districts to highlight the membership experience. Overall, I believe with these goals, we can work towards growth. With that being said, thank you for your time and consideration. Don't forget to hit the right key and vote me for international trustee. I now can see the rest of my time for questioning. I, Hannah Pavrosnik, will ask the first question followed by the district board. My question is, one obstacle many trustees face is fostering connections with district officers with distance barriers. What steps will you take to harbor relationships and serve as a personable leader for your districts? Thank you for your question. Now more than ever, I think we have all learned the strength of our relationships over long distances. If elected as trustee, I will work hard to create professional and social relationships with officers and members in the districts I work with. I will do all that I can to become a familiar face on each district's board for officers as well as members and offer my guidance and support as needed. Finally, I will utilize social media as a useful platform for networking and communication for my districts to get, better get to know me and vice versa. Hi, this is Angela. I'll be asking you the next question. International trustees often have different backgrounds that span from being lieutenant governors to having executive district positions. How can your unique past experiences and positions aid you throughout your term? First and foremost, I believe as a past district governor and member of the International Council, I've been able to experience the ins and outs of a trustee relationship. That being said, one thing that I have learned from my districts and my international trustee is that all districts and all district governors are unique, meaning that every individual district may need a different type of support and relationship. If elected as trustee, I will make sure to utilize my experience as a past club, division, and district officer to be open-minded and empathetic in my service and leadership. <coughs> I'll also make sure to make myself available to all members in need of support or international assistance. Okay, uh, this is Ryan. Uh, I will be asking the next question. Uh, many districts feel that their international trustees do not serve to their full potential, which often leads to their assistance being disregarded. How will you be an asset to your districts and ensure that you are benefiting them? If I'm elected as trustee, I will make sure that I am an asset and a benefit to all of the districts I serve by, consist by remaining consistent in my service and communication with my governors. Throughout the year, I will use monthly updates and the Key Club International Instagram to make sure that all of my districts and members are updated and informed on all international matters. Although our terms differ from the international level to individual districts, I believe that through this time I will be able to serve as a leader and offer my guidance throughout the term on any international matter or district matter. And once all of the current district officers retire, I will be able to become familiar with new district officers and help train them and prepare them for their incoming term. Uh, 
Hi, this is Sandra. So as an international trustee, you will serve as a direct connection between the district and the international. Identify a key issue between districts and the international board, then discuss how you would address it. <clears throat> Working with a lot of district governors in the past, I have noticed that many governors feel a disconnect with the international board in that they feel that their district operates as an individual item rather than as part of a united um, family in Key Club International. To improve this, I will work with the other committees and the international president and vice president to expand the Truly International campaign and create more inclusive, <coughs> inclusive social media and district-wide challenges and also initiatives so that all districts can feel that they are part of a bigger something bigger than themselves, and will be able to understand the truly international legacy. Colby. Hi, it's Colby. Um, your campaign manager mentioned that you would highlight the importance of Key Wins to Key Club International. In what ways would you do this? Because CNH Cunes is my home district. I believe that I'll be able to raise awareness for smaller districts as well as the unique history that lies between each and every of the 33 districts of Key Club International. First, I believe if I'm elected as trustee, I will take time during LeadCon to work with governors and trustees alike to establish <coughs> to establish a better understanding of the history of Key Club and each individual district, such as the unique history of CNH Cunes. Naomi? Um, in the candidates booklet, it mentions the Circle K network. Um, could you please elaborate on how you would build a Circle K network and also like build our relations with other KFAM? Sure. So if elected as trustee, I will first take time to understand the current relationship of Circle K and the individual districts that I work with. Then I will make sure to get in contact with the individual leaders or district governors of that Circle K district and first foster a connection with them regardless of um, whatever relationship is currently standing. I'll make sure to introduce myself and um, make sure they are getting to know their counterparts. Then um, I will work to create a directory of all the leaders, the current leaders in offices so that individual clubs may access it and utilize that network to host events in collaboration and also contact them as needed. Are there any other last questions? If not, I will call time early. Time, thank you, Emma. Thank you for all of your responses. Before we proceed, would all non-delegates please turn off your video camera? Thank you. We will now take a vote. I entertain a motion to endorse international trustee candidate Emma Chang. Is there a motion? I, District Treasurer Ryan Sassauer, move to endorse international trustee candidate Emma Chang. Thank you. Is there a second? I, Nicoletta Bryan, District Convention Chair, second. Before we vote, Emma, we will now be placing you in a separate room. All those in favor, please raise your hand.
Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Thank you. I'd like to announce that Emma Chang was endorsed for international trustee. And I will now return the gavel and chair position to the district governor, Emma Chang. So Sandra? Yes. Um, we need to, and I've brought Alexandra and Emma back into the room, but we need to have Mr. Bashir and Emma go into a room so he can report the results to her. Okay. So I'm going to set that up right now. So if you can, I think the next thing is a, is a report on the agenda. Is that correct? Correct. You can, you can get that started. Um, it'll take me just a few seconds to reset the room and okay. send those folks into the cells. Please welcome Ansel Batune for the Bulletin Editor Report. Hello. Um, serving as District Bulletin Editor was such a fulfilling experience and we've met a lot of goals I wanted to reach at the beginning of the term. The district hoodie, which sold out at Fall Rally South, profited over $1,000 towards the pediatric trauma program. We were able to increase social media engagement through graphics and with the help of Elisa's videos, gaining over 300 followers on Instagram in the span of our term. Thanks to Elise, the Cumans website was redeveloped and looks amazing. To end my report, I would just like to say I'm extremely proud of the editors in the district for the work they've produced. All of them could very well replace me and I wouldn't be mad at all. I'm excited to see some fresh faces on the district board. You know what they say, out with the old, in with the new. Thank you. We will now elect a bulletin editor. We have two candidates for bulletin editor. Jalen Cow and her campaign manager, Isabel Orock, and Katie Nguyen and her campaign manager, Tiffany Nguyen. To decide who will speak first, we have asked both candidates to select a number from one to 10. Mr. Dimsdale, I believe that you have those numbers. Mr. Dimsdale, you're on mute. Mr. Dimsdale, you're on mute. Correct. Um, I'm, for some reason, I'm having trouble. I don't think this is set up for me to share a screen. So I'm going to send everybody the number with the chat. Have those two students pick their numbers? Jalen and Katie. If you haven't already, please choose your numbers from one to 10. And announce them publicly. Three. Five. As Emma Chang is back, I will now pass the gavel to District Governor Emma Chang. <clears throat> okay, so uh, both for both candidates, uh, Mr. Dimsdale has sent the number to the chat, which is 10, meaning that Katie and her campaign manager, Natalie, will go first. Uh, we will now move Jalen and her campaign manager into a separate room. What? Oh, you're on mute again, Mr. Dimsdale. 
Okay, so I was busy trying to do things. So who is going into the room? So Katie and her campaign manager are going first. So Jalen and her campaign manager. Okay, let me assign them to a room. Give me just a second. Jalen and Isabel are going into the room. And I believe they're now in the room. Yes, okay, so. Okay. So we will now be, oh, okay. Yeah, we will now begin with your campaign manager. Uh, you will be given one minute to speak and your time will begin when you start speaking. Good morning, CNH Cubans. My name is Tiffany Nguyen, and I was the immediate past recording secretary from Found Valley Cubans. It is a great honor to represent Katie Nguyen as the district bulletin editor. Many may recognize her as their divisional bulletin editor, editor, but there's so much more to her than that. In the short time that I've known her, I was able to see how much that passion and dedication is put into her work, whether it is on a appointed club board, executive club board, or divisional board. I had the chance to work alongside Katie on executive club board and through that experience, I was able to see the countless hours she put into growing the club as well as herself. Her leadership skills blossomed the more she was able to interact with the members um, and she was able, um, she was always welcoming towards members and truly made the club feel like a family. She helped shape the club into what it is today over the three years that she has been a part of it. With that, I can, I can say that Katie is absolutely qualified for District Bolton Editor. Thank you. <clears throat> we will now proceed with the candidate speech and questioning. Katie, you will now be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the District Board and International Trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. Hello, CNH. Thank you for being here today. My name is Katie Nguyen from Jet Division. Now I'm running to be your next district bulletin editor. A little bit about me is that I really like sweet things. Some of my friends call me Kit Kat, and that just really stuck with who I am. That's exactly what I like about Kewans, is meeting such amazing and sweet people and building lasting relationships with them that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. As an officer on both club and divisional board, I learned what it meant to be a leader and that understood how others feel and bring them together as one big family. I believe that with the experience I've gained, I will be able to bring the same skills I've learned into a district-wide level and emphasize our ohana. In the next term, I want to improve the way we communicate and reach out to members. I want to publicize graphics that focus on consistency and have a cohesive as well as professional theme on our social media handles. I will continue to emphasize the Key Club International graphic standards and encourage officers to utilize and emphasize it more by providing guidelines and handbooks. Since my term as club publicist, then corresponding secretary and the JET Division's bulletin editor, I've gained a lot of experience in many different areas, such as graphic design, photography, and website building that will give me the opportunity to help with club editors personally. In addition to that, I've worked outside of Keywinds in my school's journalism program, where I've learned to edit and write newspapers professionally that will help that will be a helpful skill when managing article report forms with the editors. Speaking of working together, I believe that by collaborating, we can accomplish so many more things and build stronger relationships with each other. I will work closely with both the district executive and appointed board and provide all the essential resources on a timely basis. Also, I want to hear from officers directly by video calling or messaging for ideas at least once before a district newsletter is released. I also want to designate tasks and assignments for the technology committee to work together to provide for all parts of the district. I believe an important part of an organization is breaking the barriers between officers and members. Members, in order to engage members and educate them about CNHQ and Ski Club, it's essential to maintain transparency. To do this, I will create infographics, newsletters, and presentations for members to learn more about our charities and core values. Something I learned from being in my school's journalism program was that people love hearing stories that are relatable and connect them to one another. So I want to feature and display our district's character through bringing back humans of CNHQans by recruiting passionate members who will promote and help improve publicity about us. Another idea I want to introduce 
that worked really well with my division is a member's corner in two newsletters. Social media interaction is important in growing and retaining membership, especially during times like this. And since our district is so widespread, I want to create digital games and challenges such as scavenger hunts with prizes to encourage members to be more involved and participate. So what made me run for district board? Not only do I love graphic design, but one of the best things I've learned in Kiwins is how to become a better person. I was able to see myself grow into a more outgoing and passionate person, and I am incredibly thankful for that. Every, every time I go anywhere, I always remember that I feel good. To CNH, I promise that I am a highly qualified candidate, and if elected, I will give you the sweetest term yet. Thank you. Uh, we will now begin our questioning period from the district board. I will ask the first question, followed by the district board. As district bulletin editor, you have a lot of room for creativity in terms of graphics, social media, etc. Can you expand on the innovative ideas you would want to implement during the, your term? Um, in, as divisional bulletin editor, I was able to involve a lot of members and help um, encourage them to participate by having a members corner where I ask members questions about like relating to a monthly theme or whatever theme I decide on for that certain newsletter. So that would help them connect more with other members who have the same ideas. I also want to implement more social media games and challenges that will help promote publicity and have members participate via social media. Since our district is very widespread, it will help improve communication between members from different divisions. I will ask the next, que next, next question. Um, though social media and resources have all been improved and made accessible to members, many clubs lack information about vital district events and processes. What will you do to ensure that all clubs receive the necessary information and remain informed throughout the term? I will ma maintain com constant communication with them and not only through social media, such as Facebook, um, I also try to um, have their texts have it sent by text and have like a Remind 101 sent to editors and other officers that need the resources. Elise? Um, this term, Angela and I attempted to bring back humans with CNH Kewins. However, we received no applications for photographers. How will you overcome this challenge and what will you do if there are no applicants once again? Um, I will publicizes publicize it more often and and sent it to um, lieutenant governors to help encourage their editors to apply and also post it on all of our social media platform and if there's no um, there's no applicants then I will ask lieutenant governors to um, ask their historians to Sandra? Every club editor has a different level of knowledge of Key Club International graphic standards. What will you do to ensure that every club editor receives a sufficient amount of training? Um, once edit, once um, the club and all the divisions elect their editors, I will have them into a, a group chat where I will provide resources and especially um, guidelines and handbooks for them as well as have a video call to train them, especially since right now our current situation we can't meet face to face. I will provide videos to help them get started on the Key Club International Graphic Standards. Uh, 
Okay, so this is Ryan. I'll be asking the next question. Uh, the current bulletin editor has established a new standard of what is achievable for the district in terms of social media and graphics. What new ideas do you have that can continue this legacy? I will continue to expand by um, encouraging each club to promote CNH Kiwins and um, gain more followers on our social media platforms, as well as um, continue our um, graphic standards and also have a more consistent and cohesive design and a more professional theme for all of our CNH Kiwins club. I also want to continue to implement my ideas by um, maintaining communication and also publicizing more so that everyone can see what CNH Kiwins is all about. Hello, Katie. This is Hannah. I will be asking your next question. Kiwins has led a legacy of innovative graphics, newsletters, and correspondences. If you are elected, how will you build upon their foundation by utilizing your personal strengths in the position of bulletin editor? Um, I've gained a lot of experiences through Kiwins, and I have been able to work in a lot of editor positions. I've done photography, um, graphic design, and also editing um, newspapers would help me help clubs maintain an image and have a more consistent image. Oh, wait, sorry. Can, I, can you repeat the question? Yes, it says Key Ones has led a legacy of innovative graphics, newsletters, and correspondences. If elected, how will you build upon their foundation by utilizing your personal strengths in the position of bulletin editor? Okay, um, like I've said before, I've gained a lot of experiences through working in different editor roles. I'm I've Okay, thank you. Voting results, oh, sorry. Uh, so that concludes your time and um, you will be now moved into a separate room. Thank you. Uh, Governor Emma, are we waiting on Mr. Dinsdale to bring him back or separate him? Or? Oh, um, I still saw Katie in the room, so I was waiting, but I think. Okay, I don't, I don't see Mr. Dinsdale, so I just messaged him. I don't know. Where. Okay, uh, I believe she was moved, so okay. her and her campaign manager. Okay. Bring her back in. I'm going to put her back out again. Sorry. Okay. okay. I 
think you're ready. Okay, thank you. So we will now begin with our second candidate. We will begin with the campaign manager. Uh, this is candidate Jalen Cow for Bolton editor and campaign manager Isabel. So to the campaign manager, you'll be given one minute to speak and your time will start when you begin speaking. Hello, my name is Isabel Orock and I serve as one of the co-presidents of Cam High Humans. I'm gonna tell you about the best candidate for our next terms, District Bulletin Editor, Jalen Cow. These past two years, I've worked alongside Jalen Cow, who is one of the most dedicated and hardworking turtles in our Ohana, and I'm so honored to support her candidacy. She is the epitome of diligence and talent. She makes most of our club and division graphics and was selected to work on the District Tech Committee. Her hard work and passion inspires others as she heads her own Club Tech Committee, helping her underlings grow their their passion for Kiwans. Over the course of the year, I've witnessed Jalen's passion for Kiwans tremendously grow as she crawled out of her shell, blossoming into a wonderful contributor to the success of our club and division. I confidently stand by my statement that Jalen Cow is the best candidate to be your district bulletin editor. Thank you. Thank you. So now proceed with the candidate speech and questioning. Jalen. You will be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the district board and international trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. Hi, I'm Jalen Cow. I serve as tech chair for Camp High Cunes and Turquoise, and I'm running to be your district bulletin editor. So my Cunes journey started when my siblings kind of threatened me to carry on their legacies of creating graphics and videos for the club. With my experience these past few years as a tech committee member and tech chair, my passion for QNs and graphic design sparked and has only grown the more I became involved in the club. QNs has done so many amazing things for me and I really want to give back to it and help others experience the same warmth and growth that I have. My goals to create this bigger and stronger family are represented through the acronym BRA. B stands for build and I hope that I can help build up our membership and member retention through effective publicizing of Kiwins. I will do this by providing resources to editors like flyers and tutorials and adding onto editor resource packs. I also want to publicize all the different online resources more like the manuals and care packages through Remind and group chats with editors, presidents, and LTGs. R stands for represent. I will represent Kiwins through the use and promotion of the Key Club graphic standards and continue to embody its core values through my leadership and commitment to service. I also really want to emphasize and maintain the spirit of Kiwans through cute, fun, and interesting graphics and interactive posts on Instagram. U stands for update. I will consistently update members on upcoming events by posting on social media and releasing quarterly newsletters where I will give updates about the district. I also want to maintain constant communication with club and divisional editors as well as LTGs through group chats and meeting calls where I'll give updates where they'll give updates on their clubs and I can see if I can help them with anything or if there's anything I can improve on. Finally, H stands for harmonize. I want to harmonize members on the club level with the district level more and create that strong family bond. I want to utilize our district's YouTube channel, IGTV, and Instagram story more and post engaging content like challenges, blogs, maybe behind the scenes of events. Something more than recaps that will connect BB personally to the rest of the district and just showcase our district's love and passion for service and family. To summarize, next term, I want to build, represent, update, and harmonize. And I believe with my qualifications and commitment to Kiwins, I can fulfill the position and build the district into a strong servant family. Thank you for your time, and I hope you choose me as your Brulleton editor. I can see the rest of my time for questions. Hi, this is Angela. I will ask the first question, followed by the district board. As district bulletin editor, you have a lot of room for creativity in terms of graphics, social media, etc. Can you expand on the innovative ideas you would want to implement during your term? So with all this freedom, I could incorporate a lot of things into my graphics, like recognizable characters that people might find funny or interesting, and that will 
of course, attract members to go to events and be more interested in them. And I could also do more, post more challenges on Instagram, like maybe we could have a TikTok challenge where people create a TikTok and it promotes something about Kiwins, maybe the core values, and we could add an incentive for people to participate in challenges. And I could implement more animation and GIFs and things like that into my graphics so that the club becomes a lot more interesting to outsiders and it channels the spirits of those dedicated members in Kiwins. I will ask your next question. Though social media and resources have all been improved and made accessible to members, many clubs lack information about vital district events and processes. What will you do to ensure that all clubs receive the necessary information and remain informed throughout the term? So like I said in my speech, I want to maintain constant communication. So I would communicate with individual clubs and LTGs through group chats and meeting calls to make sure that everybody gets the information. And I would always send links on reminds and just have a lot of meeting calls, maybe monthly or every other month, so that I make sure that everyone is aware of all this information and the resources. Hi, this is Sandra. So every club editor has a different level of knowledge of Key Club International graphic standards. What will you do to ensure that every club editor receives a sufficient amount of training? So, like I said before, I want to have meeting calls, um, especially with people who are not as well versed with these standards. And I want to create tutorial videos and PowerPoints for beginners and people of every uh, level. And in these tutorials, I'll just go through the standards and things that people should include in their graphics. And there's also the decon workshop that I did where we just kind of went through all the essential things that you should put in a Kiwins graphic. And yeah, so I would provide links to all those resources and videos through group chats and remind people through meeting calls. Okay. The current district bulletin editor has established a new standard of what is achievable for the district in terms of social media and graphics. What new ideas do you have that can continue this legacy? So I want to continue all those interactive posts and I don't want to increase the amount of posts that we're doing so that our message doesn't get diluted, but I do want to be more interactive on our social media and reach out to individual clubs uh, through my own contacts and not just through the Cumans account. And I believe that by reaching out and doing more of these interactive things on Instagram, like tag a person that you appreciate. I think things like that will increase our family bond within the district and yeah. Trina? Um, so on your campaign literature, you said that you want to increase social media engagement by 15%. Uh, how can you ensure that you can do that and reach a wider audience? So I think especially during this time over quarantine, more people are on social media and on their phones. So this would be like the essential time to work on member re retention. And I want to do that again through challenges on Instagram and other social platforms and post interactive content 
blogs, challenges, things like that. And just fun things that people can participate in. And I believe with that, people will feel more inclined to join QWINS or be more involved in QWINS when all this quarantine is over. Um, so what are the four core values of Key Club and how do you plan to embody them at all times throughout the term? Whether it be in your graphics or your leadership. So I think I can embody the four core values through my leadership. Even though I might not be the most assertive person or conventional image of a strong leader, I will show my leadership through my behavior, my actions, my kindness, and reaching out to people, making sure they know that they are appreciated and we really care about every single member. And that will show my leadership. Caring, again, I wanna reach out to people and really interact with the members and show that they're the top of, of the triangle and they're the most important part of key wins. Uh, character building. So I'm always willing to push myself and push myself out of my comfort zone. And that, that really builds my perseverance and character. And I'm willing to take on any task, any problem, any challenge no matter how difficult. And I believe that that will build my character a lot throughout the term. And, and finally, inclusiveness. Oh, um, time was called. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. Uh, we will now place you into a separate breakout room. This takes a few minutes, a few seconds, so bear with me. I think they're in there. Okay, thank you. Voting results for a bulletin editor will be announced shortly. Delegates, please follow the instruction. Um, yes. Mr. Wrong. I got to undo it. Sorry. I'm, I'm ahead of myself, so bear with me. Okay. Mr. Dimsdale, I think you put us in a breakout room. Then. Yeah, that's why I'm redoing it, Mr. Okay, okay. Mr. Bashir. Yeah, just wanted to make sure. Okay, you're ready to go. Okay. Um, are you able to put the, oh wait, never mind. Um, 
So delegates, please submit your ballots. You will have three minutes to do so. Gina, please begin timing. Time. Okay, thank you. Um, like I mentioned, voting results for Bulletin Editor will be announced shortly. Please welcome Ryan Sassower for the Treasury Report. Okay, so although this year had its ups and downs, we have had many accomplishments. In terms of fundraising, as a district, we have raised over $17,000 for the Pediatric Trauma Program and over $864 for the Thirst Project, despite Awakathon South being canceled. These may just seem like numbers, but these numbers will have a lasting impact on the world and the lives of many people. Aside from numbers, several new resources that I released this year have improved the fundraising process and the treasurer experience overall. I released the fundraiser tracker at the beginning of the term and it drastically improved money handling for clubs as well as how fundraisers are planned. In addition, my committee and I released the first two editions of the seasonal fundraising manual, which helped treasurers throughout the district plan more relevant fundraisers that emphasize the value of varying the type of fundraiser held. I hope that these two resources can be continued for the years to come. I am so proud of all the hard work that the club treasurers and my committee members put in this year. I want to thank you all for your dedication to Kiwins, and I am excited for what the future holds. Thank you. We will now elect a treasurer. We have one candidate. Mr. Jamesdale, are they in the room? Hold on, I would like to bring those 
folks back in and then take the candidates back out. So give me a minute, I'll tell you when we're ready to go. Okay, thank you. Okay, Emma, and I'm going to go into the one of the rooms as well. Emma, are we waiting for Mr. Demsdale to come back? Yes. Oh, so he said that when he's not in the room that I'm in charge of the room. So you guys can talk when I'm in charge of the room. But when Mr. Demsdale will come back, shh. Also, I'm wearing bear ears for Keevan's bears. And this is Mr. Cunning's bobblehead. I'm not holding a head. People are texting me. Are you holding a head? <laughs> <laughs> is Mr. Bashir not here also? They're both in separate rooms so they can Oh talk. yeah, that we could definitely talk with Mr. Bashir and Mr. Demsdale gone. Jeez. Mr. Demsdale is there. Oh, okay. <laughs> One's over. Okay. Uh, so... We will now continue with the election of treasurer. Uh, we will be the. We have one candidate, um, Dana Lee, with campaign manager Ashley Chang. So we will begin with the campaign manager, Ashley. You will be given one minute to speak, and your time will begin when you start speaking. Hello, my name is Ashley Chang, and I'm the current vice president of Fairfax Cubans. As a board officer alongside Dana, I have firsthand experience with Dana's performance as a treasurer. Under her leadership, we were able to surpass all of our fundraising goals, which were already at a high standard in our division. Not only that, she has also strived to implement new ways of raising money. So she has a boba fundraiser, PTP hoodies, and various stickers to sell not only in our home club, but to the division and the district. Dana also has a strong organization skills needed to become a successful treasurer. She meticulously kept track of all her forms and fundraiser priorities, as well as our club balance account knowing exactly which amount belongs to which category. We have not had a single problem with misperformance, and I have always trusted Dana with her responsibilities. Dana has the potential to become an outstanding district treasurer, and I do hope we look forward to her ability to serve CNH Cubans. Thank you. Thank you. We will now proceed with the candidate speech and questioning. Dana, you will now be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the district board and international trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. Hello, Kewins. My name is Dana Lee, and I am running to be your next district treasurer in the upcoming term. I am a junior, and I have served as the Fairfax Kewins treasurer, as well as a member of the district finance and fundraising committee for the 2019 to 2020 term. Throughout my three years in QNs, I've gained a lot of valuable experience and perspective from being both a member and an officer. 
Kiwans has truly become such an important part of my life, and I cannot picture it without this amazing organization. My love for Kiwans has motivated me to take up this challenge and contribute to the further growth of the district. I am confident that I have the experience and creativity in order to bring fresh ideas to the table and to further improve our district. As district treasurer, there are four main priorities that I want to emphasize during my term. First is membership. As treasurer, I believe that one of the most important responsibilities is membership. My goal is to increase membership throughout the district by releasing a tips and tricks video during club rush season for treasurers to reference um, in order to explain the benefits of paid membership to their potential members. Next is attendance. Another goal of mine is increasing attendance at district events. Registration and recruiting processes are a pivotal part of district attendance, but I feel that treasurers may encounter difficulties in these areas. I plan on helping treasurers clearly understand registration processes and deadlines through YouTube tutorials, webinars, etc. As for recruiting, I plan to combat this issue by explaining exactly where each member's money will go and promoting the benefits that each member will receive at the district events. Third is records and tracking. Throughout my term as club treasurers, um, I have noticed that a lot of treasurers don't have a specific method to record all the financial actions taken during the term. I've encountered a lot of frustration uh, when I cannot find the rec records that I needed due to a lack of a clear tracking system for finances. And so in order to combat this, I will create a new funds and balance log, which will be a spreadsheet where treasurers can record all their finances during their term, in addition to the current fundraiser tracker, which was implemented this year. My final point of emphasis is communication. Communication is crucial as a district officer in order for me to relay messages and also to assist treasurers with any concerns or issues that they may encounter during their term. Like the previous treasurers have done, I plan on continuing the bi-monthly treasurer calls and the treasurer report forms in order to check up on their progress and to make myself more easily accessible to those in need of my help. Using these strategies, I hope to improve our district and serve my Kiwans Ohana at a higher level. My time so far in Kiwans has been nothing short of inspiring, and I hope that I can continue to um, contribute to this organization so that it will be able to provide future members with the same eye-opening experiences that it did for me. Thank you. Um, I can see my time for the, I can see the rest of my time for questions. All right, so I will be asking the first question followed by the rest of the district board. There has been a significant declining membership trend throughout all of Key Club International. How do you plan on addressing this and increasing membership this upcoming term? Um, like I mentioned before in my speech, I plan on releasing a tips and tricks video um, right before club rush season in order for treasurers and other officers to get some like creative ways in order to attract more members. So um, things I will include in the video include um, having like catchy posters um, and like good graphics in order to first visually attract the potential members. And then having people there that can clearly explain what Kiwans does and what kind of an organization this is. And the next step would be to retain those members in actual meetings. So I will do this by clearly having the treasurers explain where all their membership dues are going because I know some people are hesitant about paying dues for a club. So um, I feel that if we explain um, explicitly where all this money is going, then it will be um, easier for people to um, like pay their membership dues and um, easier for us to retain members. And I believe that also having like friends in the club really helps. So um, making like one-on-one -on -one and personal connections with um, between the members and also between the members and officers, I believe that will help as well. So I will include that in the tips and tricks video. Naomi? Um, how would you plan on if you were to work with the membership development and education chair um, to develop membership um, and paid membership, like you said. Um, so, like I said, um, I mentioned in the last question that I believe that one-on-one, -on -one, um, like personal relations help a lot um, because 
throughout my um, club, I've seen firsthand how um, between the members that we've formed connections with, I see that the members that we're very close with are more active in the club compared to some that don't, um, we aren't able to interact with often. So um, if I were to work with the membership development and education chair, um, I would emphasize a lot of personal connections between officers and members and just within the members themselves too. Dylan? Every club has its unique challenges due to its um, school body environment and how like restrictive they are um, in terms of funds. So how do you plan to aid treasurers who have a little bit more troubles going through um, their school's associated body and helping them process those funds? Um, okay, so the first step I would take in this is to um, sort of assess the situation through treasurer calls um, that I said I would have throughout the term. So by talking to them, I would be able to assess the situation and find out what exactly is preventing them from having successful fundraisers through their school ASB. And um, if they're having difficulties um, through having fundraisers through their school, I would advise that they use different techniques like um, just general to the general public instead of just to the school. Um, I've seen a lot of people have fundraisers in front of grocery stores or other um, public places um, after getting consent. So um, if the school isn't an option, I would also recommend that. Or there's also things like online fundraisers and advertising um, within the students. So I would also recommend that too. Um, while most clubs are able to achieve good standing status with Key Club International by paying dues, there are various clubs in the district that either do not pay their dues until much later in the term or not at all. How will you address this and what can you do to ensure that members pay their dues? Um, I think um, what I would do would be to get in contact with the clubs, um, either through their LTGs or regional advisors or even their faculty advisor. Um, and I would try to get in touch with the board there and then find out what the situation is. Um, and I could also release more resources in order for them to attract more members and get more members to pay their membership dues in order to um, combat their delinquency status or um, delayed dues. Sandra? Um, I think you're on mute, sorry. My apologies, thank you. So in the past, there have been many discrepancies with the number of funds raised in the monthly report form and the actual amount of money that was donated to charities. How can you ensure that this issue will be limited in the future? Um, so I think um, the best way to do this would be to reference the fundraiser tracker. Um, so I would, um, I would like to continue the use of the fundraiser tracker from this year um, onto the next. And um, I, I would be able to reference how much they input through um, what they input in the sheets for the fundraiser tracker. And um, by using that, I would be able to um, remind the treasurers that to send an exact amount of money that they recorded in the fundraiser checker in order to prevent any disturbances. Hello, this is Angela. This term, fundraising was one of our major...
Go ahead, Angela, ask your question, and then the next guy, and the next person can. Oh, I thought someone called time. Oh. Yeah, oh, exactly. time? Oh, time is, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your responses, Dana. Um, we will now place you into a separate breakout room. Okay. Okay. Um, before we proceed, would all non-delegates please turn off your camera? Okay, thank you. We will now take a vote. Um, I entertain a motion to elect District Treasurer candidate Dana Lee. Is there a motion? I, Elise Coatney, District Tech Chair, move to elect uh, Treasurer Candidate Dana Lee. Is there a second? I, Wendy Garon, Diamond Lieutenant Governor, second that motion. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Okay, thank you. All opposed, please raise your hand. Okay. Motion carried. Um, I, can I announce it right now? Okay. So please announce that Dana Lee was elected as our new district treasurer. Uh, before we begin <laughs> with the um, next item, um, the response. The voting responses for Bulletin Editor are in, and I'm happy to announce that our new Bulletin Editor is Jalen Cow. Okay, thank you. So please welcome Sandra Lee for the Secretary Report. Although we may, not, we may have come across many challenges this year, we have also made several accomplishments. In terms of service hours as a district, we have served over 30,000 hours. We earned 410 hours for Kiwanis family events, 1,611 hours for our major emphasis, Live to Learn, 3,000 hours for our minor emphasis, Pediatric Trauma Program, and 1,400 hours for our Governance Project, Thirst Project. Aside from the incredible amount of hours that we have served, club secretaries have also made many achievements. Throughout this term, the average on-time 100% MROF submission rate has been about 90%. Our highest on-time 100% MROF submission rate was 95% in May. Throughout this term, I have seen drastic improvement on each club's MRF, even though there was a slight adjustment to the template in early October. I am beyond proud of all of the hard work that all the secretaries and the members have put towards this organization. Congratulations, Kiwins, on another amazing term. Thank you. Thank you. So we will now proceed with the election of a secretary. We have one, one candidate, uh, Christine Doe, and campaign manager, Natalie Nguyen. So we will begin with the campaign manager. Natalie, you will be given one minute to speak. Your time will begin when you start speaking. someone who is approachable, easy to share ideas with and collaborate with, and is the keystone in our Kiwins Ohana? Well, Christine's the one for you. Hi, I'm Natalie Marina Spirit Chair, and I had the honor of working alongside <coughs> Christine on board. While working alongside her, <coughs> I came to know a very hardworking and inclusive leader. Her dedication and passion has personally pushed me to go further in my Kiwins journey. Without her, it's even possible that I would have never joined Kiwins myself. She's always been someone that I can rely on, whether it be board outlines, to event pages, to having someone to talk to at Decon at 3 a.m. She's someone I can always count and rely on. You can say that she's truly a star, out of this world even. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome your district secretary candidate, Christine Doe. Thank you. Uh, we will now proceed with the candidate and candidate speech and questioning. So Christine, you'll be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the district board and international trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. 
Did someone say they were looking for someone approachable, easy to share ideas with, and is a key student in the QN Sohana? Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm learning to be your next CNH Cubans District Secretary. So before I get into it, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my Cubans journey and how I got here. So I came to Club Rush, came to an event, really liked it, and I became a vice president intern. Um, next, I ran for corresponding secretary and got it, and now I'm currently a vice president. But the point is that I didn't stay in Keywinds because of the service. I mean, I do admit that putting Keywinds on my college application does sound pretty appetizing, but I stayed in Keywinds for you guys, the family. And I want to give back to this community that has transformed me into the leader that I am today. And to prove that I've gained so much self-confidence and gained the ability to go out of my comfort zone, I couldn't even order a chicken bake at Costco my freshman year. So the fact that I'm doing this speech right now in front of a bunch of leaders advocating for my candidacy, like that's a really big glow up. And so I, to share my goals, I made the acronym STAR, because in a sense, I believe that we all are stars. We all have our own set of skills, our own strengths, and we all do shine brightly individually. Um, but together we can light up the entire night sky. And I think that's what made me fall in love with Cubans. And so um, I'll get into it. So S stands for service. It is what Cubans was founded upon. Um, after all, Cubans means um, people, men and women working together in service. And to focus more on the emphases, I want to encourage clubs to, uh, and to do this, I will compile uh, original event ideas that clubs can participate in, in a Google Doc. T stands for teamwork. And I believe that collaborating is one of the most essential parts of accomplishing bigger and better things. And so I'm going to continue the bi-monthly calls that Sandra has been doing. And um, this is the best way, I think, to ensure communication because there are rare opportunities for a district to communicate with uh, club levels. So I really think that these bi-monthly calls are super useful. A stands for attendance. and I think it's better to focus on retaining members instead of gaining members because these are the people that are going to be doing our family. Um, R stands for reaching out. And so reaching out to other humans clubs is incredibly important, but I think it's even better to reach out to other Kiwanis branches like Circle K, Circle K and Builders Club. And it's still a really good idea to reach out to clubs at your local school as well because we all share the same goal to give back to our community and so i think it's reaching out is a really good way to spread what keywinds is all about and um how we want to give back to the community and so even even though some of these goals may seem difficult i promise that i'll be there every step of the way so that together we can shoot for the stars thank you i can see the rest of my time for questioning Hi, this is Sandra. I will ask the first question followed by the rest of the district board. In the past, there have been many discrepancies with the number of hours and total paid members in the club monthly report form, aka MRF, and the Lieutenant Governor report forms as well. How could you ensure that this issue will be limited in the future? Hello, can you repeat the question? Sorry, you logged out for me. Yeah. So in the past, there have been many discrepancies with the number of hours and total paid members in both the club monthly report form as well as the lieutenant governor monthly report form. How could you ensure that this issue will be limited in the future? So, so if lieutenant monthly report forms are incorrect, that would mean that the club monthly report forms are also incorrect. So I think I would start at the basic foundation with the clubs and ensure that Secretaries understand what they're doing and how important it is to keep accurate track of hours because it's valid and um, much better for clubs to be accurate about um, what is going to come out of their records. Okay, how would, oh, sorry. Throughout the past terms, our district has experienced a decline in service and hours. What will you do to combat this issue and inspire future members to continue their service? I want to 
create more events that people would be attracted to going to. Um, so again, with the idea of creating that Google Doc with cool events, and something I didn't mention in my speech is that I wanted to change, I want to change the MRF and add in, so I do appreciate how Sandra made the MRF super concise, and it's a really good way to look at the MRF from a statistical point of view, but I want to return the section where uh, secretaries inputted the events and their descriptions, because I feel like that was the human aspect of what made the MRF. So um, those are resources. So I want to use some of those original events and add them to the Google Docs so that we can create more events that members will be more prone to go into. All right. Uh, this is Ryan. How will you contact secretaries that do not use social media or have difficult access to technology and ensure that they are properly filling out their monthly report forms? So to do that, I would keep in contact with someone close to them that um, can talk to them. For example, perhaps their LTGs and even better, maybe their president. Um, and I will give correct and accurate information because I feel like information does get passed down inaccurately sometimes from district to club um but yes through a person near them and if that really isn't possible i mean snail mail you can bring out the letters hello this is angela secretaries need to be familiar with various processes including completing the mrf updating the muc etc what resources would you give club secretaries to help them complete these processes and aid them throughout the term in general? Okay, so concerning MRFs, I will be speaking about those if I were elected in the bi-monthly calls that we have and same with the MUC. But if it's not possible for me to communicate with every single secretary, I will create a detailed presentation on Google that um, details each step in inputting information. Hello, this is Hannah. Many say that true growth happens through keen observation. So what have you learned from the successes and challenges of the current district secretary and how will this affect your term if elected? So if I'm being honest, I think Sandra's term has been so exceptional. Like, She's done so many things correctly, and I would really like to applaud her for that. Um, so because I've seen the success, like my secretaries tell me about what they think is good and what they think um, can be worked on. So both of my secretaries really enjoyed the bi-monthly calls of Sandra, so I'll most definitely be continuing with that. I do think that communication can be an issue sometimes, but for that, I would just continue to um, improve in our bi-monthly calls and perhaps speak about other speak to other district members about their bi-monthly calls with the people in those positions and confirm that we're giving the same information out and that it's um, completely accurate. If there are no other questions, I will call time early. Okay, time. Thank you for your responses. Uh, we'll now place you into a separate breakout room. Okay. Before we proceed, would all non-delegates please turn off your camera? Okay, we will now take a vote. I entertain a motion to elect District Secretary candidate Christine Doe. Is there a motion? I, Colby Ohm, a Warden Rec Chair, 
Motion to elect Christine Doe as district secretary. Is there a second? I just I was going to second that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, Alexander Latham, Crystal Senate Governor, second that motion. Um, is there any discussion? Okay, we will now take a vote. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Okay, thank you. Would all opposed please raise your hand? Are there any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. I'm happy to announce that Christine Doe was elected as our new district secretary. So Mr. Bashir is wandering into the room to let her know. Okay. You may proceed. Okay. We will now begin with the district governor elections. We have one candidate, Angela Pachoon and candidate campaign manager, Cecilia Wong. So we'll begin with the campaign manager. Cece, you'll be given one minute to speak and your time will begin when you start speaking. She may be only four foot 11, but her personality reaches straight up to heaven. Her dance skills will have you saying, oh my, who's her very best friend? Her baby brother, Levi. Sweeter than candy and always safe key, it's Angela Batune, your future DGOB. If you don't know Angela Batune, she's the adorably fun-sized Filipina girl with a huge smile who currently creates our bomb district graphics. With her impeccable communication skills, Angela never leaves anyone on read and is one of the rare people I have found who truly listens. She's also extremely humble and fully dedicates herself to everything she puts her heart in, definitely including Kiwins. She's not only a wonderful person, she has more than enough experience to take on this next term as district governor. As bulletin editor, she has seen the inner workings of our district and has come up with ingenious ideas to solve our main issues. You'll never find another candidate with more experience, more perseverance, or more diligence than Angela Batoon. Make sure you vote for Angela, the one and only GOAT. Thank you. Angela, we will now, oh, sorry. We will now proceed with a candidate speech and questioning. Angela, you'll be given 10 minutes for your speech, followed by questioning from the district board and international trustee. Your time will begin when you start speaking. It was my first time going to decon last year, and if I was being honest, I was pretty clueless. I remember thinking that Governor's Ball was an actual ball where people dressed up, but once they played apple bottom jeans, I realized I was very wrong. I was also running for district bulletin editor last decon, and after getting elected, I was so scared that I wouldn't be able to meet people's expectations or my own. But as the term progressed, I became more confident in my decisions. At the beginning of the term, I introduced the idea of creating officer starter packs and resource packs to exec. Throughout the term, I worked on maintaining high standards for graphics and our social media. This term, membership would be heavily emphasized. Using the dues report, I would help create individualized goals with each club and division by discussing what their membership was like in the past so they have context on where their goals should be. Right now we have individual Facebook officer pages in our minds for each position. A club is supposed to work cohesively and that's difficult when club officers are separated. This term I would want to combine everything into one simplified Q&S officer page in your mind. Coming from a very technological background, I've been trying to find innovative ways to serve and bring together people during social distancing. I have many more ideas I would want to entertain this term, including possibly having an online alumni network, creating a Keywinds exec email newsletter, and making a specific Keywinds hashtag to spotlight service that often goes unseen. To me, success isn't really determined by chance, but by choice. You know, who wants to rely on miracles and outliers to reach goals? My literature is based on the acronym GO, or greatest of all time, because I have high hopes for this term and our legacy. All you have to do is raise your hand when they say my name. I can see the rest of my time for questions. 
Thank you. I will ask the first question. So what specifically will you do to help struggling clubs who either lack motivation from officer boards or members? So for struggling clubs, um, clubs are kind of like good skincare. A lot of skincare products are to prevent things like sunscreen protects you from harmful rays. That's what we should be focusing on, measures and resources that prevent clubs from going into delinquent st status or uh, suspended status. The way I would combat this is by trying to um, trying to give them more confidence by giving them resources, such as infographics on what um, all these statuses mean, like delinquent status, giving them a timeline of what they should be doing throughout the term, and also giving them the next steps they should take depending on the status they're currently in. So the more knowledgeable you are, the more confidence it leads to, the more you know, the less you're scared to do things. Naomi? Um, on your, um, on your greatest of all time, like on the candidates, um, well, never mind. Um, it mentions that you want to understand past terms. Um, how would you actively try to do that to understand like different divisions and different clubs? So I've actually been currently doing that. I've been interviewing past officers and what their experiences were like in the past because I think past experiences and personal stories are really good resources um, for your current term because in order to understand the present, you need to know the past. I think one way I would do this is definitely by looking at what our membership was like in the past. Um, I said in my speech that I would try to create individualized goals with each club. Um, a lot of clubs don't really know what their membership was like in the past. So it's really difficult for them to establish goals in the present. So one way I would combat that is by um, discussing the dues report with them and really publicizing that there's a dues report on the Kiwanis website, because I think that's a really good resource that a lot of people don't know about. Okay. So oftentimes the governor undertakes the tasks of any vacant district board position or if individuals are not doing their job effectively. How will you ensure that tasks are delegated? constructively and that you are not overworked. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. So oftentimes the governor undertakes the tasks of any vacant district board position or if individuals are not doing their job effectively. How will you ensure that tasks are de delegated constructively and that you are not overworked? Thank you for that question, Ryan. So delegation, I really tried to work on this year it's hard to give someone, um, to give people your trust. I think this term has really helped me um, create skills in delegating, especially with tech committee, and because it's kind of overwhelming to be on district board and having all this work. The way I would delegate tasks effectively is by showing that I trust people um, and not being too not micromanaging them because I know district board, they're very, um, they're very talented people and they can do what they know best. Alexandra? Um, given our current situation with COVID-19 and how we're not in school and that we also aren't able to hold certain events, um, how would you, as a governor candidate, ensure that presidents are still communicating with all of their clubs and with you in the district? Thank you for the question, Alexandra. So right now, it's really difficult. It's a really difficult time, but I think COVID-19 is actually bringing people together through social distancing. People are doing Zoom calls. They're making masks. They're making cards for people, hospital workers, um, to help presidents through this time. I would try to give them resources and ideas on what they could be doing. For me, um, I come from a very technological background and 
this is kind of like my whole, um, this is what I'm good at, bringing people together through. Technology is kind of something I worked on past term. You can see that right now with the um, virtual decon and how on our Instagram story, we were able to get people to make decon name tags. You can always find ways to engage people through social media and through calls and through technology in general. Colby? As district both and editor, a lot of your work goes on behind the scenes. How will you step forward as district governor to be a face for district board and senior QNs as a whole? So for me, I've really tried to grow myself this term because I'm not really, um, you wouldn't really expect me to be in leadership positions like this. Sometimes I'm kind of timid and sometimes I'm kind of quiet. And that's because I'm a fairly intrinsic and, and introverted person. I like listening to people rather than talking. But this term, I really try to um, go out of my shell. I think especially running at DECON last year was a big step for me, just exposing myself to people. I'm not afraid of letting myself out there and meeting new people. And um, I think the best thing about me is that I try to be authentic and just humble. Dylan? So one of the duties of district governor is to work with presidents, and one of the duties of md and &E chair is to work with vice presidents. How do you plan to connect with the future md and &E chair to ensure that the report forms are not monotonous and they don't have repetitive information? And then also simultaneously to ensure that vice presidents and presidents are working cohesively together in their respective clubs. Thank you for the question, Dylan. So one thing we kind of had a problem this year or something I noticed is that having individual Facebook group pages and individual Facebook or reminds kind of diminish the club because the club is supposed to work cohesively and that's hard when people are getting different information, different resources. Um, the way I would combat this is by just creating one Facebook group page in Remind, as I mentioned in my speech. Having that in um, having that in as our only like source to connect with clubs is good because um, the whole club is aware of what's going on, whether it be the editor or the president. Um, as for your question about the report forms. Okay, thank you for your responses. So we will now move you into a separate breakout room. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will now take a vote. So I entertain a motion to elect district governor candidate Angela Batoon. Is there a motion? I, District Treasurer Ryan Sassauer, move to elect District Governor candidate Angela Batoon. Is there a second? I, Dylan Cartina, Membership Development and Education Chair, second that motion. Uh, okay. Is there any discussion? So we will now take a vote. Would all those in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. Would all opposed please raise your hand? Okay, thank you. Motion carried. So I'm happy to announce that Angela Batoon was elected as our new district governor. And Mr. Bashir is now informing the candidate. Okay. Um, while that's going on, I will give my governor's report. So hello everyone, thank you all for joining us today. Although we are not able to end our term in the most ideal way, I'm happy that we have this opportunity to come together one last time as a district board. 
This year has brought our district so many magnificent accomplishments, and I could not be prouder of all that we have done. Though we were presented with an enormous challenge at the beginning of the year, we still managed to serve incredibly well and accomplish many things. This includes serving almost 30,000 hours as a district, raising $18,642.43 for our minor emphasis, the pediatric trauma program, and $1,020.33 for my governor's project, the Thirst Project. Apart from statistics, the executive board also took on more, a more abstract goal to create and revamp membership experience and overall increase the transparency and engagement within our district. To do so, we began by creating new and never been done before officer starter packs for club executive boards and pushing out a variety of new and simplified graphics on our social media. We created individual Facebook groups for officers and pushed forth new and accessible resources, which greatly increased communication and transparency with all club officers. In terms of club presidents, I used bi-monthly president report forms to correspond with them and held monthly calls to relay essential district information. In some nation, we took some we took on some incredibly large goals to address the critical challenges our district was facing targeting engagement membership experience and service although we were not able to achieve every goal we set out to accomplish i'm incredibly proud of the foundation we have created for future generations alongside the district board and international trustee hannah i've gained a truly invaluable perspective and lessons for a lifetime so thank you for an incredible term Please welcome Sandra Lee to read the proposed resolutions. Resolution number one, appreciation for the Kiwanis governor. Whereas Kiwanis governor Timothy Cunning has displayed immense support to either our district, and whereas we sincerely appreciate his work and kindness, be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes him for his dedication to the CNH Kiwanis Key Club organization and all of the Kiwanis family. Resolution number two, Appreciation for the Kiwanis District Secretary and Executive Director. Whereas Kiwanis District Secretary and Executive Director Mark McDonald, the District Office staff and Kiwanis District Board have been a tremendous support to our district, and whereas we sincerely appreciate their hard work and efforts. Be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes them for their support and dedication to the CNH Kiwanis Key Club organization. Resolution number three. Appreciation for the Director of Service Leadership Programs. Whereas Director of Service Leadership Programs Bruce Hennings has been a constant source of support day and night for this district. And whereas many of the district's sponsors' activities depend on his work. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Delegates extends its appreciation for his commitment and dedication. Resolution number four. Appreciate, appreciation for the Kiwanis District Committee for CNH Kiwans. Whereas the Kiwanis District Committee for CNH Kiwans has been a tremendous support to our district. And whereas the members have done a superb job mentoring our district board officers and all the CNH Kiwans members. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes the Kiwanis District Committee of CNH Kiwans for its hard work, dedication, and support. Resolution number five, appreciation for the district committees. Whereas the district committees of the of Kalnev Ha Kiwans Key Club have done an amazing job during this 2019-2020 administrative year, and whereas they have put countless hours behind the scenes in order to provide clubs and their members with exceptional educational resources and successful district events with record-breaking attendance numbers, therefore be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes and thanks the district committees for their hard work and dedication. Resolution number six. Appreciation for the Kiwanis Foundation and Foundation President. Whereas Kiwanis, Kiwanis Foundation President Roy Talley and the Kiwanis Kalnev Ha Foundation have been a tremendous support to our district, and whereas we sincerely appreciate their leadership and, and scholarship role in our district. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes them for their unwavering support towards the Kiwans Key Club organization. Resolution number seven, appreciation for the Circle K CNH district. Whereas the Circle K CNH district has been an indispensable source of support and continuous mentorship to the district board and the members of Kalnev Ha Kiwans Key Club. And whereas they, they have selflessly volunteered their time and effort into supervising our members and providing their assistance at fall rally and candidates training conference. 
Now, therefore, it be resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes them for their unconditional dedication. Resolution number eight, appreci appreciation for international trustee. Whereas international trustee Hannah Pavrosnik has been a tremendous support to our district and whereas we sincerely appreciate her love and care. We are resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes her for her heartfelt dedication and abiding support to the Cal Nevhawk Humans Key Club organization and district board. Resolution number nine, appreciation for the district board. Whereas the district board members have committed their hearts, souls, and well-being to making this term de dedicated to the members of Cal Nevhawk Humans, and whereas the district board members have worked countless hours with our clubs to bring out the best of this district and excel in all aspects of service, leadership, and fellowship. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this House of Delegates recognizes the 2019 to 2020 Cal Nevhawk Humans District Board of Officers for its dedication. Resolution number 10, appreciation for the district administer, administrator and assistant district administrator. Whereas the district administrator, Mahmoud Bashir, and assistant district administrator, Jeff Dimsdale, have shown an invaluable amount of dedication and commitment to Cal Nevhawk Humans Key Club that will never go unnoticed and will continue inspiring the future leaders of this organization. Now, therefore, let it be recognized in this House of Delegates, the time, effort, and support that our district administrators have provided this past year to the district board and the members of Cal Nevhawk Humans Key Club. Thank you. So we'll now proceed with the approval of rev resolutions. Um, I entertain a motion to approve the resolutions. Is there a motion? I, District Secretary Sandra Lee, move to approve the resolutions. Is there a second? I, Naomi Tanaka, Emerald Blue Lieutenant Gover Governor, second that motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, would all those in favor please raise your hand? Thank you. All opposed, please raise your hand. Motion carries. So that concludes all of our approvals and elections for this House of Delegates. Um, we will now be giving our closing remarks. So this is just a reminder for the district board and all of the guests that this evening we'll have several items. Um, at 4 p.m., the awards and recognition YouTube video will premiere and be available to all members via our social media. Um, at 7 p.m., we will be having our retirement and installation ceremony via Zoom, and the link has already been sent out to you. Uh, during that ceremony, the I will present my awards, Mr. Bashir will present his awards, and the foundation will recognize all of these scholarship recipients and um, other award winners. Um, also, for all of our elects and current district board officers, we will be starting our April board training over Zoom um, next Friday on April 17th at 7 p.m. Um, the agenda has already been sent out, but um, yeah, all of our board members and elects will be working together to create more goals to um, basically help transition in for the new term. Uh, this training will last for two days. So uh, the first session is, will begin on Friday, April 17th from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, those times are tentative, but the session does start at 7 p.m. And then session B will begin on Saturday, April 25th, one week later from 1 to 5 p.m. over Zoom as well. So more announcements will be sent out shortly as to what you all need to prepare. But yes, um, that concludes all of our closing remarks. Would, any, would either of the administrators or any of the adult committee like to say something? Yeah, Mr. Denzel, you first. Oh, it's a long key. Sure. Okay. Um, at the conclusion of 
House of Delegates, if all of the current board and the elects and the committee can stay on for just a few minutes so I can talk a little bit about training, I would appreciate it. Um, yesterday at the board meeting, I made concluding remarks and I just told you all, and I will say it again in front of a larger audience, how proud I am of the accomplishments and the growth that all of you have shown during this year. I think you've done a remarkable job under very difficult circumstances, and I know you all have an unlimited future. Thanks for the opportunity that I got to be able to work with you. Anyone else on the adult committee before I say my uh, couple of words here? No, we're all good? Cool. Um, well, I want to start with uh, uh, some congratulations, obviously. So uh, congratulations, Governor Emma, for your endorsement. Um, best of luck, and I know you'll be a great trustee. I want to welcome the newly elected executive board. All of you did a great job, and we're looking forward to a great year. Um, have full confidence in, in that. And not, uh, not repeating the same words over and over again, but yeah, we have to acknowledge um, this past year was a difficult year with lots of challenges. And uh, yeah, you guys did a great job. I mean, you should be proud of yourselves. Um, we know we are. Um, and uh, brighter futures ahead for those who are moving on. Uh, stay in touch with your, uh, what we call our Ohana. That being said, I would like to ask our newly elected governor, Ms. Angela Batoon, to let us know when she would like to have her uh, the first board meeting. If you are prepared, please let us know. If not, then we can definitely await. Okay. So I'm not aware of when we're going to have our first board meeting yet, but I'll let you guys know very shortly and soon. Thank you. We'll look forward to that. That is all I have to say, and I want to thank everyone who joined this meeting and uh, uh, stayed on, e even with Jans and no Jans. <laughs> I think somebody got caught. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Congratulations, and the, the gavel is back uh, to you, Governor. Okay, um, yeah, just before we adjourn, I'd just like to echo what Mr. Bashir said and really congratulate our new executive board. Um, although I wasn't elected the same way, um, I really think it's just such a happy feeling that you get and all the pride that you feel um, once the election is finished. I know I definitely am feeling that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, thank you to everyone and all of our guests who were able to um, stay, the entire House of Delegates. And yeah, I will see you all for our retirement ceremony. Thank you. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay. I adjourn the House of Delegates at 12.15 p.m.